I just got my Bible Rebound. It is absolutely gorgeous. But today we're gonna do a flip through and you're gonna see all of my notes unfiltered and stay to the end where we're gonna add the one thing I think every journaling Bible should have. Let's begin. Okay, no introduction needed. Let's go ahead and dive into my Bible. There's a few things that are missing from the very beginning of my Bible and the very end of the Bible. It's kind of a hint on what we're gonna do at the end of this video, but let's go ahead and start our flip through. I always get a little bit nervous showing you guys my Bible because it's so intimate and there's like my notes in there, you know? But I share everything on the internet already, so you know, why not share my Bible notes? All right, so we have the beautiful cover. Thank you again to Crew & Co. They just did an amazing job with the logo, the leather. It's already like getting broken in and I absolutely love that how it will patina that just means like age so beautifully and get a little bit darker I'm very excited but as you all know I had a lot of notes here at the beginning of my Bible which by the way crew and co added all these extra pages so incredible so I need to slowly add back in a lot of these notes there was like a whole page right here and they sent me back my old cover which is just so kind and considerate and it has all those things so I might see if I can just copy them and put them back in my Bible somehow. I don't know. But moving on, I have a chart here, an overview of the Old Testament and some Old Testament notes. At any point in this video, you guys can pause and screenshot or copy these notes. I am no notes hoard. <laughs> I would like seriously pay money to see some of my favorite, I don't know, Bible study or people's Bible notes. So I get it. In the past, people have said, I screenshotted it and put those notes in my Bible and I'm just so honored by that. So, and flattered, really. Look at this though. I have some notes from different books that I've read recently this year. Lots of small little flaps here. Word studies, a little bit of notes on Noah's Ark. I love chiasms. You'll find them all throughout the Bible. Once you start finding them, you'll become addicted to finding them. Y'all know I've done a video on contradictions and I say that word tongue in cheek. That's not to challenge the inerrancy or the authority of the Bible in our lives, but rather to point out if we're gonna read something literally, as in a 2022 understanding of what is literally read, we might find things that would seemingly contradictory. So I love marking those and geeking out of why language is used that seems to contradict itself and so on. And so you'll see a lot of those sunflower tabs of contradictions. This is one of those notes that I took while this Bible was mailed off and I added it in like day one after I unwrapped it from the box. Off camera, I added in a lot of my notes and I still have so many more notes to add in from the books that I've been reading and things like that. But you know, it just takes time and a free hour or two to go through those books and all my notes. Y'all know I like to take notes when I'm reading through Christian living or theology books. And yet I have found that it's probably best for me to kind of sit on those notes and not immediately write them down in my Bible. And then I get to come back to them, relearn them and re-record them. Look at this cute little chart. I actually used a ruler this day. Go Faith. Also, I've found that I always am appreciative whenever I take really tiny notes. Like I never regret taking super tiny notes. So that's a mental note. If you're newer to Bible journaling, focus on the teeny tiniest like micro Bible journaling that you possibly can because you'll never regret saving space in your Bible for future notes. For me, sometimes when I look back at like my first couple notes or even just sloppy notes that I took in a rush, I'm like, why did I write so big? I took up like that whole page or half the page and I could have, you know, saved so much space. This is a copy from the New American Commentary. The Knack, that's a commentary that I've been using this year as I've read through the Bible. Teeny tiny notes, I have no idea what those are from. I love like the, how this looks like an, I don't know, ancient document. I love whenever I do that and I make it look like aged paper with that brown colored pencil. It's like so simple, but every time I look at those kinds of notes, I'm so grateful I did it that way. It's just pretty. Here is something that I did on camera here in one of my recent videos. I cannot remember for the life of me what that was. I think it was Bible study roulette. So you guys can go find that on my channel if you wanna see it. If you guys don't know, these are notes that I cut out of the She Reads Truth Bible and I taped in my Bible. And I'm playing with the idea of cutting them back out of my Bible and putting in my own ones because I don't think I've mentioned this here on my channel, but I'm actually working on my own Bible book. What would you call these? These are like cliff notes to the Bible books. I'm working on my own and I'm combining like all of the great resources like the She Reads Truth ones, like Wilkinson's Talk Through the Bible, like all possible notes I can find on each book of the Bible. I'm combining and making like the best possible cliff notes to 
official books of the Bible that I possibly can, which is why it's taken me over a year so far. But for the time being, they're super cute and artistic and then also jam packed for just a quick access to some notes. Not a lot of notes here throughout Leviticus. You guys know the struggle. Here is another copy from the NAC commentary. If there's just like a long paragraph that I don't feel like hand copying, I will copy it on my printer and then glue it in. But if I have time and I'm not in a rush, sometimes I will write it all out by hand in teeny tiny handwriting because I want to save space or whatever. It just depends on the day, how much time I have, how patient I feel, all of that kind of stuff. Let's read. I haven't been reading my tabs. This one says, why do we care for the earth? And it's on Leviticus 25, 23 through 24. If you guys want to look that up. What else do we have? This one says, care for the poor sojourner. And that is tabbed at Leviticus 25, 35 through 36. That's one of the most under understood, like not understood aspects of the Levitical law that people just like overlook, like how much of God's heart is for the sojourner, for the outsider, for the underdog. And I think that's so telling about who he is and the character of his people and what we should look like. I'm just saying. Oh, see, I need to do more brown notes. These are so pretty. Look at that. Okay. Wow. Lots of notes randomly in numbers 14. This day I felt like really going in depth or I had the time to. This says the power slash cost of complaining and grumbling. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've mentioned that a few times on my channel, but that blew my mind when my seminary professor took us through that numbers 14 area and showing us the cost of grumbling over God's people. And oh, that kind of looks cute. Just the layers. Those are from, you know, multiple different times going through this chapter. One year I used stickers the next year I used colored pencils and pen. Oh, like this is one of the first like notes I took in the middle of a seminary lecture really fast. And I wish I wrote them smaller. All right, Deuteronomy. I love doing this, like really focusing in on the structure of each book of the Bible and the purpose and who it was written for and the time period it was written. That will really take you deeper into understanding the book of the Bible that you're studying if you focus on like all that background information. All right, let's see what this tab is. Remembering equals the testimony of faith. Oh, interesting. And I have that on Deuteronomy 2 verse 7. Oh, wow. Look how big these notes are. Yeah, these must have been really early on. I would totally redo that much smaller. Oh, here again. Remember what God has done. Oh, look, rainbow. So cute. Ooh, here's a tab that says, why do we obey God? And it's on Deuteronomy 7, 6 through 11. Oh, look at this one. Here's another chiasm. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but a chiasm like is like a visual going down and then coming back up and it's like paralleled or ah, the words are failing me, but I think you guys can visually see it and then how it lines up with the words I highlighted. I like how I did that. I need to remember that for next time that I discover a chiasm. And usually I'm, I'm reading something and I'm like, I think that might be a chiasm, but I'm not sure. And then I look up in a commentary and it says it and I'm like, oh, great. You know, here is some kind of flap. Oh, it says, who is Joshua? And then I've got his different roles as king, priest, and prophet, and how it fulfills and points to Jesus. Cool, I have no idea where I took these notes from. Love them. And then we did a Bible study on Rahab, so you guys can find that on my channel. Ooh, judges. I really took teeny tiny notes up here. I loved the visual that one of my seminary professors gave me of like the mountain hill thing that they were on in the Deborah battle. Is that what you would call it in Judges 4? Whatever, it doesn't matter. It just is important to ha kind of have the picture of how when the rains came, being up there is a deliverance, not being trapped. Because if you were in a normal battle, you'd be trapped up there. Anyway, don't know if that makes sense, but. Uh-oh, terrible bleed through. If I was taking notes on this page, I would probably put like white sticker paper or just white printer paper over this and then write. I'm pretty sure that this was a Crayola just marker. And then lots of cute little flaps on Ruth. Your girl loves Ruth, finds it very beautiful. If you guys have not watched the Bible Project's video on Ruth, go and watch it. In some pages, I don't have anything but a few sentences highlighted or underlined. That's totally fine too. I hope when I do these Bible flip throughs that you guys aren't like, I need to have more notes in my Bible, but rather you just get inspired to go read your Bible because it's not about performance of who has the most notes and whose Bible looks the prettiest. That's like making such a, a God-centered thing a very me-centered thing. This is so not about my notes or me even having the best notes or pretty notes because Lord knows they're not pretty. <laughs> 
most times they're misspelled and chaotic, but it's just delighting in God's word. So that's my goal is to inspire you guys to delight in God's word. Y'all know my lifelong goal is to preach the gospel to the nations. Oh look, this is a copy from the notes from the Bible knowledge commentary. That's like a great beginner commentary. If you haven't gotten that one, or if you're looking for a beginner commentary, I encourage you to get that one. I don't agree with everything in it, but I really like how it's written. It's very packed with information. So anyway, that's my favorite beginner commentary is the Bible knowledge commentary. A word study on the blood guilt concept, or it's more of like a theological exegesis on this idea of a blood guilt. And I used a little window, that's fun. And anyway, I feel like one of the things I really wanna see in my lifetime is a revival of delighting in God's word. Like people view it as an ancient document that's not, oh, this is a genealogy. People view it as an ancient document that's not fun, that's really boring, that's miserable to read through, just, you know, only boring people delight in. And I want to exemplify a delight in God's word that intrigues non-believers. Like how could an ancient book give her life? How could she delight in it? And that also revives um, believers spiritual walks and so I don't know that's kind of like my heart cry with my channel is just to infuse in you guys this passion for God's Word to um, taste and see how good it is I love me some gold foiled scrapbook paper Aw, this is no color, Faith. What were you thinking? <laughs> in all honesty, I was probably most definitely taking notes for seminary class and was in way too much of a rush to color it in. Y'all guys can tell I love the faux tape method and I like making it look scrappy even though it's not really a bunch of little sticky notes and scrap of paper. I like making it look that way. A genealogy. This is actually a screenshot from my seminary classes. The beauty of modern day technology is you can just screenshot the screen, print it off on sticker paper and sticker it into your Bible within two minutes. It's amazing. Color coding, love when I do that. Oh, look at this little washi tape. I love this. That's so cute. I think that's adorable. I wish I did this more often with like the washi tapes and the layers and stuff. It's just not always on my mind. Ooh, I haven't been reading my tabs. Okay, let me get back to reading my tabs. Okay, contradictions. Um, there's a lot of them in between Kings and Chronicles. And again, I have a whole video about it, but it says this is different than what 1 Kings 7.15 says. So there's that tab. Ooh, here's some copies from the Bible Knowledge Commentary again. This is some notes that I copied out of the Cultural Background Study Bible. Here's some notes that I drew in to look like a paint splatter. And this tab says, read this, the power of prayer. Oh, it's on the other side. Power of prayer we see in 2 Chronicles 14, 11. <laughs> look at this. This is a complete mess up. Do y'all see that? Okay, it looks like I wrote some notes maybe on the wrong page or something. And I wrote them really big. I covered up my mess up with white sticker paper. And then I have a little sticker here. It says, Wynn handed me this sticker and I thanked him. He gave me an adorable, you're welcome. I guess that was a year ago. Another sticker from Wynn who watched to make sure I wrote this in my Bible so I remember forever, ever. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, what's this? What repentance should look like? Oh, cool. I don't have a reference really tied to it, but this is somewhere in the Ezra 10. Job. Y'all know that's my favorite fact about Job. So here's the Psalms. I don't know what these notes truly cover, but I have the five books of the Psalms, which is super important. And then with each book of the Psalms, I try and put their notes by like the start of book three or whatever. Here's an idea if you have a interleaved Bible where every other page is blank is you can just cut a window and take notes on the next page's passage, if that makes sense. Anyway, just some idea to play with. Ooh, I love color coding like that, matching up with this, y'all get that. I love when I do that for the outlines of the Psalms because it just really helps me tackle the Psalms and like it, sometimes the Psalms just overwhelm me because it's just, I don't know, statement after statement or feelings after feelings. And it's like, when am I supposed to be walking away with? Because that was just a lot. And so when I look at the overall outline, that kind of really helped me. This is one of my first Bible journalings and I might have done this on a YouTube channel, I can't remember. Here's my little flippy flap. I need to do another one. Ooh, I loved that I did that recently and how it turned out. So I definitely want to do that some more. So I was taking a ton of notes and ran out of space. So I just went ahead and added a page for each one of these Psalms. Can you see that? So I don't even have notes on Psalm 122 on this page yet, but I just went ahead and put it in so that I could have a page 
24, Psalm 125, Psalm 124, what is this? Psalm 123, 122, and 121. Anyway, I just was already running out of room because I did this on this page. So if you have done a lot of Bible art in your Bible and now you're like, great, I don't have room for actual notes, you can always just add in more paper. Oh, I love that. To me, that looks so cute. Okay, anyway. This is painting with coffee in my Bible. That's a video that we did here on YouTube. Then um, this is some washi tape that I printed myself with this really cool device, the printmaker. You guys can search that on my channel. I have a video on that. Into Song of Solomon. Pause this and read this. Super fun, super interesting. Anyway. What is this? The gospel is for all. It's not exclusive. And I have that on Isaiah 56, seven, end of seven. That's really pretty. I love how She Reads Truth has pretty notes like that, but I don't love that they get wrinkled sometimes because they're so much lighter than my actual Bible pages. So lesson learned on that. But one of my Patreons mentioned in our app that she can actually iron them out with her iron. And so I need to try that. Ooh, look at this. Charts that I added in, fun. Oop. <laughs> I didn't finish those notes. That's real life mom with toddlers, unfinished notes. That's okay. Next year, go back through, add some more, and it is okay. Let's see, what is this one? Old Testament saying Jesus is God, and that's on, I don't know, Jeremiah 22 through 23-ish area. Now, as we're entering into the New Testament, <laughs> the notes before each one of the gospels are crazy, just absolutely crazy, and that's okay. Would never, like undo them, you know? Sermon on the Mount, guys, Sermon on the Mount. Some beautiful layering, need to do that more. Although it does take up a lot of space, so I don't know. Yes, yes, love that. I, I think I traced it. Okay, Mark got notes as well. Luke. So many tiny little flaps, Christmas passages especially. More flaps. Ooh, the frontispiece of Luke. I love that thing. Again, the gold foil. I think one of the best things about having all these notes in my Bible is, you know, I'm always picking up from where I left off learning, you know? Yeah, that is priceless. It's not like I can really super forget whatever's written in my Bible because it's there forever, you know? So I really don't think that you can mess up taking notes in your Bible in that aspect. Like you're just remembering it, essentially. It's like an analog way of remembering, right? Be encouraged. My notes are not perfect. I don't like look at each page and know exactly what each paragraph is talking about or have an exact memory all of the time, but I'm always super grateful that I have them there. This is the start of John. John has a ton of notes. It's Hannah notes. John is like the most written about book in the Bible. Lots of flaps. This isn't quite as bad as Acts though. You'll see that in a second. The Acts has tons of notes or little flaps, I should say. Because if you don't know, I have a course through Acts and we studied it in depth with my patrons. And so I uh, just, each time I learned something, I added a tiny little flap and that's what made me realize, oh, you know, I need to start not adding just tiny little flaps <laughs> and such, I can add entire pages like this pink page. And so that's my, I don't know, like midway through my study on Acts, I started doing that but Axe is crazy. As you can tell, I kind of picked pink as a theme through Axe. I'm just the classic girl that pink makes her happy. And so that like sunset color of pink, that's like pinky orange. Me and my mom just love that color. I don't know. It's kind of like that with a little bit of pink added to it. Or it's close to this. I don't know how to describe it. It just, oh, it makes me think of my mom because it's my mom's favorite color. And I can't like look at a sunset without thinking about her and missing her. And yeah, pink just makes me happy. And especially that like neon orangey pink. Oh, delectable. <laughs> Romans. I've showed this a few times, but there's lots of notes here. Lots of notes. Okay, so wait. How do I want to do this? I like these little scrapbooky flaps. I've shared them on my channel before. A tab about the Trinitarian theology in Romans 9 5, and then a tab about the predestination topic, obviously, in Romans 8 and 9. That's a big one for 
the topic of predestination, which we covered in my Calvinism Arminianism video. If you want to see kind of where Joe and I differ slash challenge each other, there's that. More notes on Corinthians. I love these little people. We did that in a video on my channel here and they make me very happy. It's like they're holding onto my notes. Oh, look, and I even said, we hold onto this. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. This is an article that I'm not sure what I think about it, but it transformed my understanding of this one chapter of the Bible. So I copied it and I put it in my Bible and it's just from a book. Oh, these are from my Galatians course. Okay, we're getting into Ephesians. Oh, little church. Y'all have seen me do this window before. And we're getting to the end. We're in Colossians. What does this tab say? Why we don't follow tradition slash man-made laws. And that's on 1 Timothy 4, verse 3. I still haven't fixed this mess up, guys. You guys are all gonna shake your heads because that mess up was there on my last Bible journaling flip through and I asked for your advice on what I should do with it and I still haven't fixed it. This is me covering up. Jude and Revelation. Not a whole lot of notes in Revelation except for the ending part. Okay, and then here we are at the end of my Bible and I was so blessed by Crew & Co to be given all these extra pages. Now, if you guys are semi newish here. I haven't talked about it in a while, but I am a strong believer that every single journaling Bible that they mass produce should have an envelope. And you might be like, Faith, what do you mean an envelope? Well, this is like my number one tip on people who are new to Bible journaling and struggling to create like a system or to Bible journal on the go or in the pew. And this is what made me really feel comfortable in my Bible journaling was because I knew I always had a level of creativity already prepared. You see, in my original, this is the original cover to my Bible, right? I had taped in two envelopes. And these envelopes held scrapbook paper slips for notes and flaps. They held stickers back when I was doing my Bible journaling sticker club and I'm still working through using them all. Like, can y'all see this? There's tons of leftovers. I would always keep like the mess ups because I oftentimes made more mess ups. Oh, there's a picture of Winnie from BBS. How cute. Okay, but I often had like mess up stickers and tabs and because I would stick them in the envelope in the back of my Bible, they were always there when I needed them. Like no matter if I'm in my studio here or if I'm in the pew on Sunday morning or if I'm at a random Bible study that I wasn't prepared for, taking notes or whatever, I've got supplies to make a tab, to make a flap, to really do anything and make it cute and match the rest of my Bible because I have an envelope in in the back of my Bible. So today we're gonna add one and I'm gonna show you how simple and easy it can be done. All right, so just grab yourself any kind of envelope. This is an old Christmas card envelope that we never used. I guess we didn't mail the Christmas card. <laughs> I am going to rip it apart and trace it onto scrapbook paper and that way it will be like a thick and sturdy envelope. So I'm gonna rip this apart. Do you see that? This is just gonna be a pattern now for me to trace and make a new sturdier one out of scrapbook paper. And I get to pick which scrapbook paper I want. So it'll be super cute, right? Okay, let's do that. Bada boom, and I will have an envelope to add all the stuff back into once this is all dried and sturdy. 
So I pray that this really inspired you in taking your Bible notes, but at the end I'll be all, this all falls flat if you don't know what to write in your Bible. So if you want some direction on what to write in your Bible when you're Bible journaling, check out this video here and I will see you guys there. Bye guys.